wondering if the Love Every Storyteller play kit is worth it compared to self curating with Amazon alternatives or other dupes. I'm going to be breaking it all down for you in this video. In short, yes, but there's a catch to that, which I'll cover. I'll walk you through all the items. We've had this play kit now for just over nine months. I'm going to let you know how my three-year-old has loved it, as well as how my one-year-old has loved it. I'll talk about all of the different alternatives you can buy, and I'll leave links to all of those in the description box below. And we'll even talk about Love Every's most recent update, the book bundle, which kind of throws a wrench into this play kit and whether or not it's worth it. And if you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. I've also reviewed all the past Love Every play kits to date, so I will leave a link to that full playlist in the description box below. And again, I have links to all of the Amazon alternatives or other toy dupes for all all the past play kits too if you are just interested in self-curating. Let's jump into what's included in the Storyteller play kit. First up is this Easy Connect Fort set and this comes with 24 dowels, 8 corner brackets, 12 sleeves, and 6 clips. It also comes with a visual instruction guide with a few other variations you can make using these pieces. I was super skeptical about this item. I did not know how often we would actually take it out to use. We typically have a pickler triangle right here in this section. So I was like, I don't know if this is going to be a hit, a dud, if it's just going to sit on the shelf collecting dust. But I have to say it has become one of our favorite love every items of all time. The fort is easy to connect. However, I I introduced this play kit to my daughter when she was closer to three so a little bit before the intended age range of this play kit and she wasn't really able to start assembling it herself and still needed some of my help until closer to three and a half years old so it is easy assembly it's definitely easy disassembly she could do that since she was about three years old but I wouldn't say that like a three and a half year old is going to be building this completely independently that will probably happen closer to four is my guess storing it was another concern of mine but it's actually really easy to store I just saved the boxes it came in and I put all the pieces back in the boxes my kids help me with this and it just sits in our playroom so whenever they want to use it they go ahead and pull out those pieces also the dowel box has like a little opening window which is really nice because my one-year-old can somehow finagle a dowel out whenever he wants and he has loved using these as drumsticks he holds them while crawling and loves to hear the sound they make as they clack on the floor my my daughter has used the dowels as wands. Really, like, forget the covers. I haven't even gotten to the covers part yet. Just the dowel structure. We get a ton of use out of. It's a great open-ended toy that I never saw coming. As far as dupes for the fort kit, there is this one, which is the most similar to Love Every's in terms of number of pieces. However, my big complaint with Love Every's is I actually wish we had more pieces, which is why the alternative I would recommend is actually this one. The next set of items are actually these fort covers. So it's three pieces of fabric a yellow one, a really long blue one that drapes over three sides, and then this puppet theater window. These are awesome. If you were to get this yourself, you could also just purchase some Sarah Silks or use a sheet. We use this with our Sarah Silks a lot. And while we have done puppet shows with this, the way my toddler prefers to play with this is this is actually like a storefront a lot of the time, or we'll use it for playing house, and this is like a little window into the house. She loves this. The amount of ways you can play with this are truly limitless. And I'm going to really dub Love Every's three-year-old play kits the year of Waldorf, if we're being honest here. I mean, even in their last play kit where they have the planning my day board, the days of the week wheel, the colors on that are actually in line with how Waldorf teach the days of the week. Truly, really, this is the year of Waldorf. You can just do so much with this. Definitely going to get years of use and it folds up small, easy to store, 1010, recommend it. As far as dupes for this, I'd always use bed sheets. The Sarah Silks are another item item that yes it's going to be a little bit pricier but you're going to get so much use out of it and you can do so many other things with it. I really love having silks like that in a playroom but beyond that if you wanted like a true puppet show theater dupe, Hava has this one. It hangs from a doorway so it's really easy to store, super easy to set up. If you wanted something a little bit more sturdy, Melissa and Doug make one that does come with a stand so you could set it up anywhere. While we do puppet shows, we definitely use this more for pretend play house, grocery store, restaurant, all sorts of other things more than the puppet show. Which I guess leads me to the next item, the storytelling emotion puppets. And these are 
awesome. So it is two little over the hand puppets that have Velcro where the eyes go and then six sets of different emotion based eyes. We love these. These pair perfectly with the Observer Play Kit, the emotion books and little wood peg toys that you got there. But honestly, we get so much more use out of these. And I may even let me know in the comments if you want me to do this. I've been thinking about doing a video all about how to play with your toddler to help them navigate transitions. As we all know, two to four years old are packed with transitions for our kids. It's not uncommon to have sleep issues related to it, some regressions and things like that. So these puppet dolls have been fantastic for that. You don't need puppet dolls to do that. You can use just regular blocks, but that's a whole other video in itself. Again, let me know if you want me to make a video about tips for playing to help your toddler navigate transitions and life events in the comments below. So we get a ton of use out of these, but I will say if you don't know how to use these for processing emotions with your toddler, I could see them sitting unused quite quite often. As far as suits for this, I'm not gonna lie to you, you could honestly get a few pairs of old socks and either like a permanent marker and draw faces on them, or you can get packs of stickers that have different emotion eyes and just stick those on the socks over and over. If you did want a more sturdy set, you could buy this set of six emotion dolls, very similar to Love Avery's concept here. The next item is the Squeeze and Spray Mop, which is essentially a toddler sized version of the Swiffer wet jet thingy that has like the, the solution built in, not just the regular skinny mop. As far as dupes for this go, honestly, there's a Montessori hack out there where you do use Swiffer. You just take out the middle piece and connect the handle into the base to make it toddler size. Of course, you're not gonna get that like wet jet portion of it, but honestly, we don't use this a ton. My toddler had definitely asked to use it a lot. I don't really ever mop if I'm being completely honest. It is my hope that in future versions of this play kit, they get rid of this item. Love every does such a good job with really like unique toys, especially in the next two play kits, that I feel like this one is kind of lackluster, especially for a play kit that I think a lot of people are going to be on the fence about getting. As far as dupes for this, like I already said, you can do the Swiffer hack or Fisher Price has this one. It doesn't have like the solution. Next item is this double-sided letter and letter sound animal puzzles. So this is a gorgeous puzzle. The puzzle pieces are like this clear plasticky acrylic material with the letters kind of like engraved into it so it's a tactile experience too where you can work with your toddler to trace the letter. On one side you can focus on just matching the letters which is great for younger toddlers just taking an interest in letter shapes and then on the other side is more of like working on the phonics of the letters teaching them letter sounds as it relates to the animal on the board. I was most excited about this item so color me shocked when my toddler has kind of liked this item the least and I get it. The puzzle pieces are not the easiest to put together. Everything does fit together quite snugly. And beyond that, the letters B, D, P, and Q are all super confusing. So obviously like B, P, and D, there's no surprise there. Those all kind of look the same. The Q doesn't have like any sort of decoration on the tail. So we have this added confusion of the B and the Q. And since the puzzle pieces are clear, there's no context clues of the background of the puzzle piece for where these should go. I know that kind of sounded like a lot and a little confusing and that's because it is a little confusing. In other words, your child could pick up the Q puzzle piece thinking it's a B. It looked correct. However, when you go to put it into the puzzle, it's not. I think it's just a little harder for kids because not only are they having to properly identify the letter, they're having to properly identify where it goes without the added contextual background. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I think I've given this to her about six months ago. She's only played with it a handful of times. I do see it as something that we will probably get more use out of as she gets more into letters. She is minimally into letters. I'll say like once every couple weeks she'll ask to do letter works. And as far as dupes for this go, Melissa and Doug have a letter puzzle. Don't get the added puzzle of the back as well where you're just matching the letter shapes. Typically in the past, Love Every always gave bags or some sort of storage solution with boys that have a lot of loose parts they do not for this one. For storing it goes we have these bags and I've been loving this for storing puzzles and different kind of smaller toys. It fits perfectly into this. I will leave a link. I got a huge pack of them. The next item in this play kit is Adela Comes Home and I have to say this is by far my daughter's favorite love every book. 
of all time. I'm not exaggerating when I say I have probably read this book 500 times now. It is about a little Native American girl going back to her tribal land with her Nune and her Yaya and some of the traditions they practice. And I don't know if she loved this book so much because I have smudged her in a similar way since she was a baby. I also studied under several shamans over the years and a lot of the shamanic practices I studied overlap with Native American practices. So she has been to ceremonies that look and have a lot of the same elements shown in this book. It is beautiful. And of course, as far as dupes for this go, there's going to be nothing exactly like Love Avery's. And then as always, this play kit comes with a little play guide, which is essentially your spark notes version of parenting this age range. And then in case you missed it, Love Avery recently launched their book bundle, which is essentially an add on service for subscribers for an additional $18. You can get two more Love Avery books included with your play kit. This is essentially $9 per book, which is really a no brainer price point given Love Avery's book quality and just kind of the general cost of books for kids around this age. And these books really, I think are just so fantastic for this age range. Like I mentioned earlier, my toddlers had sleep issues. I think sleep, attachment, separation, it all kind of goes together. And that's probably a whole other video in itself, but both of these books tackle the concepts of separation and loss. So in the naming ceremony, it is about the Hebrew naming ceremony, but the little girl lost her bunny. And then in honor to help, it is about dad works for the US Air Force and is preparing to leave. So kind of both of these topics, approaching loss, approaching separation on two different types of levels, both of which our three-year-olds are gonna end up struggling with at some point and are gonna end up needing our little extra support. We're kind of moving into whether or not this play kit is worth it at this point. Qualitatively, if you're getting those two add-on books, now I haven't gotten my hands on them yet, so I can't say this definitively, but based off of how Love Every has done their three-year-old books, which I think are some of the best Love Every books we have seen to date, I'm gonna guess that they did a really good job with these. Because this is such a difficult topic to find quality books or round that is going to push me in over the edge to say qualitatively speaking I would buy this play kit with the add-on books however if I have zero interest in getting the add-on books I think I would actually purchase some of the specific dupes instead financially speaking you could recreate this play kit for as little as $90 if you got all of the cheapest dupes I mentioned or as much as $220 if you got all the most expensive dupes I mentioned. Cost of this play kit is $120, so obviously we're looking at kind of like a big range there. This is where if I were to self-curate this, I would get Fort Kit that has twice as many pieces as Love Every's. I would get Sarah Silks. I would get DIY emotion stickers that make my own puppet, and I would get the books I mentioned. And getting just those dupes is gonna come out to around $140, so yes, more expensive than Love Every's, but you're gonna have twice as many pieces for the fort. Those Sarah silks are gonna have be a bit more versatile, spending slightly more money than Love Avery's, but also getting more materials at the same time. So it's really kind of up to you. If you are a subscriber and are gonna get this play kit, you're not wasting your money at all. I would definitely spend the extra $20 to buy the add-on books. Sorry, I'm not giving you a more clear answer. It's definitely a personal choice. I'd love to hear if you have this play kit, do you guys like it? If you're going self-curating route, how those dupes worked out for you. Maybe you guys can give some clarity to others in the comments. As always, my name's Rachel from The Confused Mom. Be sure to go back, check out my past Love Every Play Kit reviews, check out my mom Montessori at home tips and until next time have a good one